ako urong dito. And I said, I would stake my honor, my life, and even the presidency. Good morning, Malacanang Press Corps. As ating mga bisita, welcome sa regular economic uh, briefing dito sa Malacanang. Today, we have Assistant Secretary Tony Lambino. Maraming salamat, uh, Undersecretary Rocky. At magandang umaga po. At welcome muli sa ating uh, almost weekly economic press briefing hosted by the Economic Development Cluster and PCOO. Uh, bago po natin talakayin, ang mga usapin tungkol sa presyo ng langis, Malugod pong ipinapababatid ng economic team sa publiko na ang ating inflation rate noong buwan ng Oktubre ay nag-stabilize sa 6.7% at bumaba ang ating month-on-month -month inflation na nasa 0.3%. Ang mababang month-on-month -month inflation ay nagpapahiwatig ng pagbagal ng pagtaas ng presyo ng mga bilihin at magandang epekto ng mga hakbang ng gobyerno sa pagbapababa ng presyo ng pagkain. Hayaan niyo po akong basahin ang ilang bahagi ng joint statement ng economic team ng Duterte administration, partikular na ang DOF, NEDA at DBM tungkol sa October 2018 inflation. Concerted government efforts as prescribed in Administrative Order 13 to tame the prices of goods in the previous months have finally resulted in expected outcomes. And such promising results further motivate the economic team to work closely with all concerned government agencies to more aggressively implement mitigating measures to ease inflation over the medium and long term. As always, the economic team is mindful that much attention has to be given to food, which remains to be the major contributor to inflation, even as its price decelerates. To hasten the decline in consumer prices, the government must continue enforcing mitigating measures, particularly interventions in the food supply, one of which is rice. To compensate for the lost harvest in typhoon-affected areas, rice imports should be closely monitored to ensure that their arrival is timely and sufficient. We also call on concerned government agencies, especially the Department of Agriculture, to speed up initiatives to distribute seed buffer stocks for rice, as well as corn and other high-value crops in disaster-stricken areas in time for the planting season this November to January. Interventions in rice production should be supported by policies that will further ease food supply, which remains crucial as demand for food items is expected to increase with the onset of the holiday season. Congress must pass the long overdue amendments to the Agricultural Tarification Act, particularly the Rice Tarification Bill, which is expected to reduce rice prices by two pesos per kilo to as much as seven pesos per kilo. It will also reduce the inflation rate and generate resources to improve productivity of our farms. Setting our sights on longer horizons, more should be done to ensure price stability of food products. The government needs to pay closer attention to the agriculture and fisheries sector to significantly increase productivity and to be more competitive and resilient to weather-related and man-made shocks. Pero ngayong umaga, magandang balita ang patuloy na pagbaba ng presyo ng langis sa ating merkado. Sa katunayan, pang-apat na linggo na po ang mga big-time rollback sa presyo kada litro na ipinapatupad ng mga oil companies upang lalong mabigyang linaw ang mga hakbang ng gobyerno upang bantayan ang presyo ng langis sa loob at labas ng ating bansa. Narito po ang masipag na kalihim ng Department of Energy na si Secretary Alfonso G. Cusi. Secretary Cusi. Uh, good morning to all members of the press. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, thank you, Asik uh, Lambino, for the introduction. And to my fellow workers sa government, maganda pong umaga sa ating lahat. 
Uh, yesterday, the Philippine Statistics Authority announced that inflation in October held steady, unchanged from the previous month. This is in line with what has been predict predicted by our economic managers. Inflation has picked and will taper off over the rest of the year. I am pleased to announce that over the past month, we recorded four consecutive weeks of decreases for oil prices at the pump. The fall in the prices in the Philippines is reflective of movements in the global market. This was caused by several factors. In October, OPEC production rose to its highest level in almost two years as higher output from Saudi Arabia, Libya, and the UAE pushed production up to 390,000 barrels per day. Additionally, oil prices fell this week as the start to U.S. sanction against Iran's fuel export was softened by waivers that will allow eight major importers to continue buying Iranian crude. Despite these downward trends in prices, the Philippine government is expecting further volatility as markets continue to adjust to these developments. In recognition of this, the Philippine government is putting our people first and taking measures to mitigate short to medium term volatility. volatility. Under the DOTR and LTFRB, fuel vouchers for public utility, utility jeepneys in the form of a card are provided to qualified franchise holders. For the remainder of 2018 and the entire year of 2019, the government has allocated 4.8 billion pesos towards this program. The DOE has worked together with oil companies to provide relief to consumers in the form of, of corporate social responsibility programs. A total of 1,317 stations across the country are now providing a fuel price discount for public utility vehicle drivers amounting to one to three pesos per liter. Our collective experience over the last few months has reaffirmed the DOE's commitment towards a long-term energy security initiative. An essential pillar to that MPC, you have a question? Question? MPC? Ah, A. I'm sorry. Nestor. Morning. Morning. Morning, Secretary. Morning. Secretary, can you give us an update on the expected oil exploration deal between the Philippines and China in time for the visit of Chinese President Xi Jinping? Well, um, I'm not, uh, I, I don't like to preempt uh, what will be the discussion between, uh, during the visit of uh, uh, President Xi Jinping, and uh, the topics are being taken care of by uh, DFA. But are we expecting an exploration deal in time for the visit of Chinese President Xi Jinping? I'd rather not answer it uh, at this moment. MPC question. Why, sir? I mean, if you, if it's okay if you can give the details now, but are, at least are we expecting an exploration deal? Because uh, Salvador, uh, presidential spokesperson Salvador Panero last week said that the government is preparing or drafting at least three gas exploration deals in the West Philippine Sea. Well, there are uh, there are exploration area 
within Fili exclusive Philippine territory that is uh, already in the uh, here in Malacanang uh, for signing. So if uh, Secretary Panelo is referring to that, then that's the one. Alas. So sir, will there be a lifting of the ex oil exploration moratorium since we will be uh, sign if if you are to sign these deals, will there be a lifting of the ban? Because I think uh, previous administration imposed a ban on this. Well, the issue of the lifting is being taken care of by the DFA, you know, because of the diplomatic issue. As far as the DOE is concerned, uh, prior uh, so that we can resume uh, we can resume uh, exploration, we need to lift that moratorium. May follow up, are they? MPC, no more question? Okay na tayo? Ah, sige, mag... Ma may timeline ba, sir, kung kailan nyo ililif yung moratorium? Uh, actually, that, uh, that is best answer by, answered by uh, DFA. No? Um, that's why um, our, our focus now, DOE's focus uh, on developing indigenous resources is uh, on the 14 free, predetermined areas within the Philippines' exclusive territory. Those are offshores and onshores, and this will be, already be made available come uh, third week of November, of this month. Okay, uh, Christine? Sir, uh, but uh, has the DOE recommended or made a recommendation for the lifting of the ban? Uh, we, 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 did, we did discuss that. I did discuss that with DFA, and uh, I have requested that uh, that DOA's position is to lift uh, the uh, the moratorium. But as I've said, that issue because of the diplomatic concerns is best answered by DFA. Sir, when did you when did you uh, make a request that for the lifting? When did I? Yes. When did I what? When did you when did you uh, yung, uh, state your position to the DFA that the DOE wants the lifting of the the ban? Well, uh, from uh, day one, that has been the position of uh, DOE. Uh, we wanted to lift it so that we can resume exploration. But, but as I've said, that issue has some diplomatic concerns, and we defer to DFA handling that. Are there any recent talks with the DFA on this uh, issue, sir? Any recently? recent talks? Oh, yeah. uh, recently, yeah. this one? Uh, yeah. Wala pa. So the last time was like last the year? The last time, actually, uh, siguro mga uh, the trip to Israel. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. But that, that talk was with the DFA. And what did they say, sir? Mary? Because we were working on the uh, uh, the signing of for, uh, of the uh, ratio with ratio, the exploration. Um, uh, what what number is this? I forgot. Um, that uh, that exploration contract with the uh, ratio. So while we were working on that, uh, we said that we should also, uh, you know, it's best for the country to have that uh, lifted so that we can. Also resume exploration in the so, area. So last na lang. So no feedback from DFA after uh, that. They are uh, taking uh, they taking it up. I, what I know is that they they, they are taking it up. Uh, ang sa mga diplomatic concerns. Thank you, sir. Okay, MPC questions. Um, microphone, please. Cedric. Sir. Morning, sir. sir uh, yes, sir. It's been uh, four consecutive weeks of rollback. I don't know if we can make projections based on it, but. Sir, if you base it on uh, historical records, sir, can we make projections uh, until uh, the end of uh, the year kung ano magiging uh, trend doon sa presyo ng uh, gasolina, sir? Well, uh, that actually we are very dependent on uh, what is happening in the international market. So our informations are based on the forecast uh, of the uh, developing, producing, and exporting countries. And uh, based, if I would just uh, share with you what the forecast of the uh, for the coming months, it said that uh, it would uh, remain at the 70 level. I mean, uh, low 70s and the high 70s. Oh. Per barrel. Dollar per barrel, sir. 
na uh, per barrel uh, yes uh, that is dollar per uh, per barrel that is uh, that is the indication based on the forecast that uh, we have been following uh, the dubai uh, the the maps you no know, and the brand Jonah? Jonah, Sir, you. quick follow up lang kanina um, yes ma'am if you can divulge ano yung mga diplomatic concerns dun sa uh, exploration well the diplomatic concerns were the uh, yung mga basis nung when the country, uh, when DOE, when DOE uh, issued the moratorium in uh, in early 2010, 2011, I think, and uh, they uh, because uh, China then was uh, opposed to our uh, uh, to our exploration in the area uh, because uh, they claim that it is part of the South China Sea, uh, belonging to. Uh, uh, the China territory covered by the, by the nine dust line. Okay, MPC questions? No more? Okay, um, uh, sorry. Uh, Secretary, yes, sorry. which areas are, which area or areas are up for exploration? Ano po yung mga inaay ng government na areas? The na? 14, the, uh, yes. the 14 uh, predetermined areas. Uh, These 14 predetermined areas are within the, uh, the offshores and onshore, no? Uh, from uh, uh, the Mindanao to uh, uh, no, uh, North uh, Luzon. Mm -hmm. Questions? Bernadette. Sir, you said that uh, the DOE is forecasting that the oil prices, the Dubai oil will fall uh, at the $70 per barrel, low $70 and high $70 uh, range. Po. So, ano po, sir, yung factors, sir, for uh, this uh, forecast, sir? Ano sa tingin nyo, ba't hindi po siya magihit ng $80 per barrel? Well, uh, first, I'd like to make it clear that the, uh, what I shared with you is not DOE's forecast. No? Uh, this is the forecast by the international uh, market, uh, which we are following. Uh, the, the basis of that is because of the softening of the uh, uh, what is the sanction imposed by the U.S. against Iran. Uh, they have issued waiver uh, to something like eight countries um, that uh, to import oil from uh, Iran. Okay, and then of course uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, have, have maximized or is maximizing their production. As well as uh, the Saudi, no. So with that volume, that hopefully uh, would keep the price at that uh, range within the seventy dollar range, no, low seventies to high seventies. Uh, but sir, despite this uh, forecast po sa uh, sa world market, sir, so hindi na po ba natin kailangan magsuspend ng next round of excise tax, sir, sa DOE position po, sir. Well, uh, yung sa issue ng uh, excise tax, I would rather refer that uh, to uh, DOF. No. Um, Asek Lambino is uh, here, and I'm sure he'll be able to answer that. Magandang hapon po ulit. Um, as you know, the economic manager submitted the recommendation to suspend the next tranche of uh, the increase in excise scheduled for January 2019. That recommendation stands, and uh, it is uh, uh, a, an official document that we need uh, to uh, to receive from uh, the Office of the President in order to implement that recommendation. That recommendation was made when the price per barrel for uh, Dubai crude and mops was above $80, and uh, the futures markets also showed uh, $80 and above for November and December. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Bernadette. Uh, Rosen, okay, sir. If I just might add, no, um, if we look at the increase in diesel, no, from December 2017 to uh, October 2018, ang nakikita po talaga natin ay mga 15 pesos na ang tumaas. No? Um, ang uh, computation po natin dyan, kung, kung gagamitin po natin yung 15 pesos per liter, ay may dalawang piso na dapat uh, uh, idagdag dun sa excise for January 2019. 
that's around the uh, 13 to 15% kung isama po natin yung VAT on the excise. No? So, uh, hindi po talaga natin uh, i-address ang buong pagtaas ng presyo by suspending uh, the next uh, uh, tranche. Ang ginagawa po talaga natin ay uh, tumutulong ng konte by making that recommendation. But at the same time, ina-anchor po natin yung inflation expectations para po yung behavior ng market, yung behavior ng household, yung behavior ng mga negosyo ay mas maging akma dun sa uh, pag-stabilize ng mga presyo. Salamat po. Um, si Rosalie muna. Rosalie? Ah, okay. Follow up. Sige. O, oh, sige. Daryl, then... For sir, uh, for, sir, uh, for Asik Lambino, sir. Sir, si Budget Secretary Benjamin Jock, no, he said na he's still hopeful na mag-push through yung excise tax on the first uh, quarter. So, uh, does, does this mean that it can still change yung suspension po? Will his opinion uh, matter for in changing that? The recommendation that was submitted to Malacanang was received. No? And that recommendation from the economic team stands. Ang inaantay lang po talaga natin ay uh, ang official order uh, from the Office of the President. But that recommendation uh, stands. Okay, ask Lamino. Sir, just to be clear, sir, uh, the recommendation stands even if uh, the price of crudes uh, remains at 70 for the remainder of the year? If it, uh, if it is below the threshold, ang tanong natin, I think. No? Uh -oh. The recommendation stands because when it was made, the price was above the threshold, lagpas sa $80 per barrel, at saka pati po yung futures uh, na tinitingnan natin, yung futures prices hanggang uh, end of the year ay lagpas din po sa 80 At the time, the recommendation was made. Apa. Since ang projection po sa international market is bababa ng mga 70 eh, pero mag-stand mag pa rin yung recommendation niyo, sir? Um, ideally, ang gusto po sana natin gawin ay i-review yung recommendation after it is implemented. So, at some point next year. Oh. Okay, a question, sir. Secretary Kusi from yes, uh, Pia Ranyada. How many joint exploration agreements are in Malacanang for signing? And who will be signing these documents? Uh, well, um, th there are two. Uh, I think these are, uh, if I remember, it's uh, service contract number 57. And this is uh, this is the issue of uh, farming in for a company to be because uh, that service contract is uh, uh, owned by PNOCEC and they needed a partner uh, to pursue uh, further exploration and uh, exploitation if uh, the time comes. So they've been looking for partners, and uh, one partner that they have shown that interest is the Sino. Uh, uh, the Sino. So uh, for them to farm in, because uh, it has been uh, farming in is not allowed, uh, uh, EO, I don't, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't remember the EO number. So that needs amendment. And uh, so we have submitted our uh, uh, recommendation uh, for its amendment so that we can already uh, sign that uh, exploration. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Rosalie? Hi, sir. Uh, good afternoon po. Other topic po. Do you also support the recommendation of other sectors na bawiin po ng LTFRB yung pong implementation ng fair increase since according to reports for... Iba ba ang... Bawiin po yung pagpapatupad ah, ng no. fair increase. Ah, uh, Sorry. Uh. Ba bawiin yung... Uh, implementation ng, uh, po ng, ng implementation. fair increase. No, uh, I, I'm, uh, I have no comment on that and uh, I would leave it to uh, LTFRB and DOTR uh, to evaluate uh, the, you know, the validity of the claim. Okay, sir. Um, iba pong topic ulit. Yun pong effort ng pamahalaan to import... Uh, oil sa non-OPEC countries, ano po yung update? Nang, Ang, na, ano po yung update sa efforts ng government to import oil uh, sa non-OPEC? Non oh, yeah. oh, uh, uh, we are continuing. You know, and the framework has been, uh, has been approved. Uh, ang nangyari lang, nagkaroon ng delay because uh, of the issuance of the LC uh, because of the sanction. But that is being addressed already. So 
aside from Russia po, ano po yung iba pa pong non-OPEC countries na tinitingnan po natin? Uh, Iran. Ang kasama yun, pero may sanction nga rin, no? Yung sa Iran. And then, of course, uh, pa, sino pa ba ito mga kinausap ng uh, PNOCEC? Mm. I, can, I, don't, I don't remember anymore the other, because the, this went under uh, through bidding, no? So I, I don't remember, I just don't remember who else submitted. Okay, question, MPC? No more, I see. Sir, yung forecast, sige, Bernadette, go. Ay. Sir, nasabi niyo po na dalawa yung agreements po na nasa Malacanang po, di ba, for signing. Sabi niyo po yung isang agreement is SC57. So ano po yung isa, sir? Can I, I'll, I'll give it to you uh, later, no? Kasi uh, just uh, slip my mind kung ano ang uh, uh, SC72? Number. Uh, no, no, 72 is, uh, not 72, because 72 is uh, within that uh, nine dust line claimed by uh, China. Mm -hmm. not, definitely not 72. Ah, oh, okay. I'm definite about that. Sige, sir. Sir, yung sinabi niyong nag-submit po kayo na recommendation for the amendment of the EO po, sir, regarding sa partnership ng, I think, PNOC tsaka CNOC. Kailan po kayo nag-submit, sir? PNOC, EC, and uh, ZINOC. Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes. That is, uh, ZINOC, that is on uh, SC57 mm -hmm. exploration. Mm -hmm. uh, as I explained earlier, uh, that SC57 is owned by PNOC, EC. And they needed a partner uh, to pursue the work, and uh, I think uh, the best uh, the best proposal is coming from uh, Sinoc, and uh, PNOC EC cannot uh, continue uh, the agreement or the acceptance of uh, Sinoc proposal until that EO is amended. So, kailan niyo po sinabmit, sir, yung recommendation to amend the EO po, sir? Kailan? Opo, oh, kailan po. Uh, late last year. Okay, sir. Thank you po. Okay, I'm busy. No more questions? Okay. Sir, yung forecast kasi na talagang bababa yung presyo ng, or yung presyo ng, uh, ng oil, ano ang eh, magiging effect nito sa inflation natin? Uh, also inflation no? uh, I think uh, the infl inflation caused by uh, by oil um, first we are projecting that the uh, price of oil there will be rollback again next week uh, because of the uh, improvement in the price uh, in, uh, in the price of oil in the international market so that is that is the good news and what uh, now on the question on uh, effect on it sa, uh, sa inflation of course uh, nakakatulong ito na mababa yung uh, plan inflation pagka bumababa yung presyo ng, uh, ng uh, langis. Sabi ko nga po kanina na yung uh, there were four series of uh, rollback. Magkakaroon na naman tayo ng, ng rollback uh, next week. So maasahan natin na uh, yung uh, factor contributed by oil in inflation will be lessened. No? Actually, from September to October, it has already uh, normalized. And ibig sabi, um, what I mean is that it's stabilized, no? uh, na maintain na niya. Okay. Si Asek Lambina, may, may answer kayo? Uh, ano daw pwede maging effect no? uh, With the Secretary's permission, yes, uh, kung titignan po natin yung top 10 contributors to inflation, Kasama po dyan at number three, yung electricity, gas, and other fuels. Number four, operation of personal transport equipment, yung mga uh, pribadong sasakyan. At yan po ay uh, ma makakatulong po dyan ang pagbaba ng uh, presyo ng ating oil imports. No? So kung bumaba po ang uh, international price of uh, our oil imports, ay direct po yung effect on those uh, on those items, no, sa commodities. Meron din pong uh, pass-through ang fuel into uh, the production of other commodities, pero ang uh, estimate po natin dyan ay anywhere from 3 to 10 percent lang, no, ng cost ng production. So, uh, in terms of direct effect, nandun po talaga sa uh, household fuels and sa uh, private vehicles. Magla-last question na tayo, MPC. So, question Malala. from uh, Joe Malaya. Comment daw po uh, sa concerns raised by Senator Gachalian that the importation of some 2 billion pesos worth of diesel from Singapore 
may not be the best option to lower the price of diesel and assist PUVs since uh, not all gas stations would sell the lowered price diesel from Singapore. Reaction na po. Uh, you know, I, I heard that uh, yesterday people were uh, uh, asking me about that question. Kung ano daw po ang uh, position ko do sa statement ni uh, uh, Senator uh, Winga Chalian. No po. Uh, I'd, rather than answering it uh, here, uh, I requested that I meet first with uh, Senator Gatsalian para mapag-usapan po namin talaga what is, uh, kung ano po yung talagang uh, substance, ano po mga issue ng kanyang uh, position. Okay, thank you. No more questions, MPC? Okay, maraming salamat, Energy Secretary Alfonso Cruzzi. Salamat kay Assistant Secretary Tony Lambino. Thank you, MPC. At sa ating mga bisita, back to studio sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television Network. Maraming salamat po. Gandang araw po sa lahat.